come back okay so we continue from question nine question nine you're, you're given okay we're dealing with trigonometry but then this one was really tricky like if you got this one right then you know you probably like uh, schedule to what you uh, really pass your exams very well so you on target there so if you if you want you can pause this video and then try to do it on your own but then if you see that it's complicated you can you can always resume the video and then i can show you how to go about it so here you're given it's given that uh, sine theta is equal to 5 over 13. so the tricky part most of you recognize that you're dealing with uh, trigonometrical ratios so you can recreate the right angle triangle that gives three and uh, that gives that give five and thirteen so some of you use so ka cho or cheshu chao but then if uh, if you use any, anything that you use just identify how do you get sign so you get sign from what from opposite over over hype okay so what does that tell you it tells you that the triangle that you're dealing with oh sorry lousy lousy drawing so like this like this so it tells you that the triangle that you're dealing with the opposite side so you can define theta here so the opposite side to theta would be this side here okay so it'd be five that's what they're telling you and then the hypotenuse which is um h here the hypotenuse would be 13. then the, if you know the, the, the pythagorean um triple for this one then you'd probably know the side as well if you didn't know, then just uh, use Pythagoras theorem, okay? So to get this one here, um, let's call it x. So x squared would be equal to 13 squared minus 5 squared. So here you get uh, 169, okay? Then here you get minus 25. What do you get? You get uh, 44, right? Uh, one, one. You get uh, one, okay, you get 4, one, 144, okay? So, so 169 minus 25. So 169 minus 25, you get uh, 144. Okay, so this is also some form of validation. Because if you're getting 144, you actually know that 144 has a, has a square root. Okay, so x is equal to 12 here, the square root. So here, uh, this one in our triangle, uh, x is equal to 12 so this means this means that the adjacent side it's actually equal to 12 okay so that's just about it you want cos theta the problem is uh, let me let me uh, actually tell you according to this you would get uh, cos cos theta would be adjacent which is 12 over over high which is 13 so you could just get 12 over over 13 another rule another guideline is that signing the cos they're always Less than less than one okay so that's another guideline so if you're getting 12 over 13 that's good enough but then the problem now is that you're given this this guideline here so you're not actually dealing with theta which is smaller than 90 you're dealing with theta which is greater than 90 so how do you do that okay so that's the problem now for 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 course you should know that um you should know that uh, cos uh, cos is it 180 say 180 minus theta is equal to negative cos theta like this okay so this is this is it so the cos of the the cosine of the of the angle here which is less than uh, uh, 90 it should be negative the cos of the of the larger angle there okay so here cos would be equal to adjacent of i but you actually have to put negative there okay since you are told this range here so it'd be negative adjacent which is 12 of i which is 13 okay so this is uh, what you'd get for tan what you do is uh, just say uh, you say tan theta is equal to if you want you can just say tan theta is equal to uh, sine theta divided by by cos theta okay so you'd actually get uh, sine theta is equal to 5 over 13. So the way that I would advise you is uh, if you're dealing with two fractions, you put the divided by as divided by, okay? So cos theta, cos theta is equal to what? We got negative uh, 12 over 13 here. So here you can say 5 over 13, this one has to be plus, times, then you get negative 13 over, over 12 here, then you, uh, this one. Then you get uh, negative 
5 over over 12 like this okay so you can actually just use uh, our calculation uh, straight up to actually get uh, your turn from your from your course and your sign sign doesn't change any sign so sine of the angle smaller than 90 should be equal to sine of the angle between 90 and uh, 180. another way to do it is to identify that turn is equal to what turn is equal to opposite over over adjacent but then to also recognize that there is a sign change when you're dealing with turn between 90 and 180. So you just put negative, just as we did uh, for course. And then you'd get five, negative 5 over, over 12. Okay, so that's, that's also uh, a faster way of doing it. So let's quickly move to uh, the next part. The next part asks you to state the name of the polygon with rotational symmetry of order 3. If you've been watching these videos and uh, you get this one wrong, I don't know. Because they always ask, these are like really easy marks. Whenever they, they ask you of, of a polygon and then it's it's regular, always this year should be equal to the number of sides. So whatever uh, uh, and whatever shape that has that number of sides has that order of rotational symmetry. When the polygon is what is um is uh, is regular, so it should have been name the state the name of a regular polygon with rotational uh, symmetry of order of order three okay so it has to be regular polygon so the regular polygon here with three what shape is um is uh, three sides it's a triangle okay so but then they say name a regular a polygon so you actually have to qualify that this poly polygon it's it's regular so here if, if you write this i'm sure that they'll give you four marks but then if you really want to write the correct, the very correct answer, you have to say equilateral. Okay. Why? Because it has to be a regular polygon. Okay. So that's just about it. Let's uh, quickly move to the next part. Next part, uh, you're given the density of a certain stone uh, and it's known and it's, it's this much. And then you're asked to calculate the volume in cubic meters. Okay, so this is important. You want to calculate the volume in cubic meters of a piece of stone with this mass, so 7.5 kgs. Big, 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 big problem here. The problem is there's a lot of unit conversion that you have to do, okay? So here, what I advise you to do is you can uh, get the answer in, in cubic uh, centimeters and then you convert to cubic meters. Or you can just get the answer straight up in cubic um, uh, meters okay so the way that uh, we, we're going to do it is we're going to convert first our density so this one it's raw if you want you can write it it simply uh, signifies it simply signifies um our density okay so 2.5 you can say grams here per okay Notice that I didn't write gram then slash this uh, slash this forward slash here and then say cubic centimeters. The reason I didn't do this is you are you actually have to show the conversion. Okay, so how the units cancel? So here you want to you want to cancel the the grams here to make them into kgs. So how do you do that? You you have to know that uh, the, the grams will be will be at the bottom. So the grams will be 1000 grams here. Okay, per kg. So kg and uh, 1000 grams, they are the same. So it's as if we're multiplying by one. We're not changing anything. That's why this stuff is called a conversion factor. Because you're not changing anything. You're just saying, someone is saying half, half a dozen. And then someone is saying six. You're just changing the way that you, you express things. So here, this one will be the conversion form from grams to, to kgs because this gram will cancel. Okay, but then we also need another conversion from square cubic centimeters to cubic meters. How do you do that? You start with what's called uh, a, a scale factor. A scale factor would be the, the linear one. How do you convert meters to centimeters? Okay, so it would be the conversion factor from uh, uh, centimeters. You can say from centimeters to meters is still fine. So from centimeters to meters. What is it? What's that conversion factor? It would be what? It would be uh, 100 centimeters, okay, per what? Per, per one meter. So 100 centimeters per meter like this. So if it's cubic centimeters here, you actually have to cube everything. So you cube this one, you cube this one. 
So here would be what it would be one zero 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 zero. Okay, so you're looking at one million there. One million cubic centimeters is to a cubic meter. Okay, so this is the conversion factor which you want. So here we say times. Then you want in uh, cubic cubic meters. So cubic meters should stay at the at the bottom. So cubic meters should stay at the bottom because you want to say per cubic cent or cubic meters, and you asked to calculate the volume obviously. So it's still fine. So here I would be one million. So you can write your one million year cubic centimeters like this. Mm. Then what do you do? You start cancelling stuff. So two, three, one, two, three, then one, one, then one, then one. Then you get um, 2.2.5 multiplied by 1,000. So if you want, if you want to cram, you can just say the conversion would be 1,000 here. But then if uh, so many students get this question right, then you might not get the full marks, okay? So it'd be uh, kgs per what? Per, per cubic meter like this. But then this is not your answer. This is just the conversion factor. It's also a conversion factor, it's just density. And then you have your, your mass. So volume is equal to what? Density is equal to mass over volume. Volume change of subject is equal to mass over density. So it's equal to mass over, over density here. So our mass is what? It's 7.5 kg is okay. Over our density is what? Is um, 2500, uh, 2500 kg per, what? per cubic. Um, uh, meters here okay so here what do you get you get um 7.5 over 2500 like this so here you can say 25 into 25 one into this you get zero zero okay so 100 divided by 100 very very good thing why because we can just shift our comma two times and then we get the answer okay so here would be zero we're yeah, putting 25 minus seven then here would be three so 0 0.3 divided by 100, what do you get? You get 0. Point, we're now shifting the comma uh, this this way two times. So it'd be 0. 0.003. Okay. What? That's it. Okay. So this was an interesting question. Thanks so much for sticking around uh, to the end. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. You both. Out. Mm -hmm.